Great. Thank you so much, Louisa. And I'm only sorry that I can't be in New York uh, along with, I'm sure all of you also wishing to be there. So just to start, as a repeat, I'm a long established consultant to Oxford Manipal from, from way back and a shareholder. And some of the work at the end that I present here in, in RNA has uh, benefited from subsidized uh, Oxford Manipal reagents. So this is about modifications and right from the very start, from the very uh, first time uh, strand seek started to work, there was always the expectation in many ways that, that Nanopol would sense uh, uh, DNA and later on RNA modifications. And this was shown both by the company, but also by uh, academics. Here is um, uh, Jared Simpson and others uh, publishing papers in 2017 and improvements are still arriving. And for those who were watching some of the talks, I think yesterday, this is a lovely uh, plot of correlation between bisulfite and nanopore readouts of DNA uh, methylation. So uh, we are quite comfortable often with DNA methylation. The classic in the human setting is CPG methylation, where the Cs are methylated. Um, it's long been established as a marker of cell differentiation, um, and it automatically propagates through meiotic uh, divisions. There are other eukaryotic modifications, such as 5-hydroxymethyl-C, other even weirder things, including things like uracil um, with uh, uh, DNA um, uh, backbone. And then there's even more exotic things in bacterial uh, modifications, probably many of which we haven't seen. But I'm going to give you an example here of a human setting, which is COVID, uh, around some COVID uh, human genome sequences. Then at the end, I'm, I'm afraid I can't do justice to it, but for those people who have seen uh, Logan's, um, uh, Logan uh, Maroney's poster, you will know that uh, myself and, and others have worked with Logan and other people on RNA modifications. And this is very exciting to see the diversity of modifications, and we've got a lot of uh, discovery to do uh, in this space. So my first topic is about COVID disease severity, and this is uh, leveraging a data set developed in the UK called Genomic CC, led by Kenny Bailey, down there in the scrubs on the left, uh, with Genomics England, and that's really the technology development by Genomics England. Genomics England uses a lot of Illumina sequencing, but also uh, it uses nanopore sequencing and this is one of the examples of it using nanopore. And this is about COVID genetics. And just to set a background, your chance of going into hospital in particular has quite, um, given that you're infected with COVID, has quite a strong risk profile from your genetics. And this has been a surprise. It's much stronger than many other infectious diseases. And there's a worldwide consortium that has come together to bring out which are these genetic risk loci. And there's this very strong one, for example, on chromosome three that was discovered early on. Now in the study that I'm gonna present, thankfully we don't have to re recapitulate this discovery power because we would need a lot of samples. Rather, we're gonna ask the question, how or why do these genetic loci change the risk of COVID? Can we understand um, the, the relationship between the SNPs and their downstream biology through methylation. Uh, with in Greg's team in um, uh, Genomics England, uh, they processed uh, 155 uh, patient samples, 77 severe COVID cases and 78 mild COVID cases. Severe meaning went into hospital, and mild meaning not going into hospital. And it was a relatively standard uh, oxid nanopore run pretty good uh, on, a, on the uh, R9.3 um, pause, um, reasonably long uh, reads. So the N50 of the reads being 20 KB, and you can see some of the QC plots uh, here. I just wanna give you a sense of how we can analyze this for the methylation. Let's imagine we've got this SNP in the center here, this AT SNP, and there are three CPG sites nearby. There could be one sample where that individual is homozygous A. So both of uh, the uh, haplotypes the individual has is an A haplotype. And here I'm imagining that two of the CPGs are strongly methylated and one, the site three is weak shown in the colors. 
And you can imagine also that we have another sample that is the T allele. Um, and in this case, I'm showing a difference between the A allele and the T allele where the T alleles are weaker. Uh, they have much weaker methylation uh, than this. But of course, we will also have individuals who are heterozygote. So where the mother, for example, provided the A allele and the father the T allele. And then the heterozygote individuals are quite interesting because of the length of nanopore reads, we can phase from the SNPs to CPG sites, which are nearby, and therefore know the relationship of the um, haplotype that each CPG uh, methylation signal is from. And here I'm showing uh, a kind of concordant behavior where the A allele is methylated and the T allele is unmethylated inside of the heterozygote. So uh, two of my colleagues, uh, Tom Fitzgerald and Fanny Devereaux, uh, worked this up um, uh, by collating the SNP uh, genotypes uh, from different locations, mapping the nanopore data, running that through nanopolish, and going through the methylation tools. And we're a bit jealous of the new methylation tools that which, which would have made it much easier to do that. Uh, but this was a couple of months ago, and so this was kind of state of the art back then. And indeed, we see what we perhaps expect. So this is one particular CPG site. It's near a region that we know is associated with COVID severity. And in this case, there is very little difference between the mild and severe cases. But when we look at the genotypes on the right and in the middle here, you can see that the blue genotype, uh, which is T, is kind of hidden by the legend, is much higher than the heterozygotes and then the homozygotes C. But we can actually take that heterozygote signal and now split it out into the two different haplotypes. And here in this case, there is a difference between the T allele and the C allele in the individuals who are heterozygous. And so we get this extra piece of signal from this heterozygous uh, scenario. So we ran a statistical test across the entire genome, but focused only on the regions which we know from previous studies were associated with uh, um, the genetics of COVID. And you can see here what's sometimes called a Copenhagen plot. So it's a Manhattan plot, but colored by the different SNPs in the different locations um, uh, for uh, methylation patterns. And so these are different methylation patterns. Each point here is a methylation pattern associated with one SNP per color. And the y, uh, the y axis here is the p-value. And you can see that that p-value gets to a very healthy level, in fact, um, uh, quite, quite uh, you know, up to the, the minus 20s for some cases, showing that we get strong impacts of genetic variation on local CPG methylation. So just as the example which I showed at the start, uh, we have another example here around chromosome 21. But this is interesting because this SNP in the top panel is making one particular CPG uh, go up. Um, so the non-reference allele, the G allele, has much higher methylation. And we see that also in the heterozygous um, uh, split to the right. But below that, you can see that there is a different CPG site with the same SNP and this same SNP is unmethylating, uh, demethylating this uh, CPG site. And again, we see that recapitulated in the heterozygotes. And so this is an example of a coordinated shift in DNA methylation by this SNP that is associated with COVID severity. As it happens, it's upstream of a gene known to be involved in the immune system. And so this is a very strong evidence that what this uh, SNP is doing is changing the genetics of the expression of this gene. Oops, going the wrong way. Perfect. But in addition to this, we can ask this question about whether there's any change to um, uh, methylation, um, but to the methylation due to the severity. So this is now a CPG uh, on chromosome six. Uh, actually quite close to the MHC, almost inside of the MHC. 
And you can see there's a moderate change on the left-hand side with severity. That is that more severe individuals have slightly less methylation than mild individuals. When we look at this in terms of genotypes, we can see there's also a split by genotype. So the non-reference allele in the light green on the right-hand side is showing uh, less methylation. But what is very interesting in the final panel is when we mix these two bits of information. So what we're showing here is the mild to the left and the severe to the right, and then split out by genotype. In the case of the mild, the heterozygous individuals are in the same, uh, roughly speaking, the same methylation as the reference allele. But in the case of the severe case, the heterozygous individuals are heavily shifted down towards the um, more uh, unmethylated scenario. And we can see that shift not only happening uh, between individuals, but also between haplotypes on the same individual. So this is now, these three panels are focusing only on the heterozygous individuals of this SNP. And you can see now that there's a stronger shift in the heterozygous individuals between the mild and severe cases. You can see that the haplotype, the, the non-reference allele, the green allele is lower, but that is really due to the fact that the, the, there's also a shift between the, the reference allele between mild and severe cases. It's only the mild reference alleles which are methylated. And so in this scenario, there's an interaction here between the SNP. There's both a genetic effect and the impact of disease progression on this CPG uh, methylation. So just to wrap up this part of this talk, the nanopore um, uh, native DNA here provides a robust readout for CPG methylation. And the long reads of nanopore allow distant CPGs to be phased to heterozygotes. And this is a quite a unique feature of nanopore methylation studies is you can get this long distance phasing. And we can show a strong impact of COVID-19 genetic loci with CPG differences. Most of these, which is probably what we would expect, but most of these are genetics driving methylation, and therefore potentially these methylations are sort of upstream of the onset of COVID severity. But some CPGs show a interaction term between genetics and severity of disease. Now I'm just gonna have a little pause here, or not pause, but a little shift in gears to RNA. And for those people who, who uh, went to Logan's poster, um, uh, this will be a repetition of that. For those people who are not, it's basically a little advert to go to Logan Mulroney's poster. There are an, an extraordinary number of RNA modifications, over 170 different known uh, RNA modifications, and we have not exhausted this at all. It has a richer, RNA has a richer life than proteins in terms of their post-transcriptional modifications compared to the proteins price translational modifications. I'm just putting a number of classics here that includes pseudouridine, so critical in the Pfizer-BioNTech uh, vaccine, uh, inosine, uh, methyl 6A, um, methyl 6C and others. So there's just a huge number of different modifications on RNA. And in many ways, this is a very open field now, unlike DNA, because until uh, RNA sensing from nanopore, we did not have an easy way to discover uh, or to characterize these modifications. We just knew they, they existed chemically, but we didn't know which species of RNA they were on. So this goes through some of the techniques to do that. Um, previously, which I will not bore you with, they're all a bit epic. Uh, they do give you a readout, but they are a bit epic. What we are going to use is nanopore sequencing and a shift in signal. Now, one of the problems here, unlike DNA methylation, is it's much harder to train a model because we really don't have a truth set. Unlike DNA methylation, we don't know really which bases are methylated and which bases are not. We cannot build easily a trained model. And so instead, we're going to just look at this change in signal. The change in signal will tell us the modification is there but it may not tell us which modification. In fact, it won't by itself tell us which modification. And we need a contrast, for example, a knockdown mutant that will shift the signal due to one particular modification or in vitro transcription. 
And uh, a very talented postdoc in my group now, um, sadly hired or rather brilliantly hired by Nanapur, um, uh, Adrian Ledger and his colleagues uh, built a way of comparing signals of wild type RNA versus in vitro transcribed RNA knockdowns or knockouts. And it uses uh, re-squiggling and then it's a statistical framework, which is in some sense, classic generalized uh, Gaussians and uh, multivariate Gaussians uh, to allow you to do statistical comparisons of the two different types of RNA. And here are some in a case of a knockdown in yeast where we know that we've knocked down uh, the methyl six, one of the methyl six A um, um, methylases in RNA. And what you're showing here is seeing a dwell, uh, you're seeing different positions are the columns and then it's dwell on the y-axis and current intensity on the z-axis. The thing to notice is that these heat maps are different between the top panel and the bottom panel. And you can see that very often the bottom panel or the top panel, one part overlaps and another part doesn't. So notice the top left has a nice red component um, uh, in the top left, uh, which is not present there in the bottom left. And from that, we can call the presence of a modification uh, in the RNA. And this corresponds to many known ways of, of mapping RNAs. I'm giving some examples here of known structural RNAs where previously binding and other methods have allowed us to associate M6A positions on this structural RNA. And the nanopore readout corresponds to the biology and to the known sites extremely well. So unfortunately, uh, that was really a teaser uh, and that work was by Logan Mulroney. Please go and see his poster or go back to the community to get the full details. And I presented work really by, from my own group from Tom Fitzgerald and Fanny Devereaux. And let me acknowledge yet again, uh, Kenny Bailey, the Genomics CC consortium that provided the samples and the Genomics England dataset, Greg Elgar, who provided the nanopore data for the COVID work. And with that, I am very happy to take questions.